I'm looking forward to discussing with you today trends and challenges of the international malting barley market, short and midterm. Take a look at the world grain and particular malting barley supply and demand situation at present and in the future. The last two crop years, 2013-2014 and 2014-2015, have been years without any major problems. And hence, the world managed to harvest its two largest crops in history. And at the same time, world-ending stocks for grains recovered to the most comfortable position in more than a decade. That will not protect us from the next crop failure, but it should prevent prices to panic next time. The world's annual production is unable to meet demand. The picture is somewhat different for barley. Yes, the world has produced reasonable large crops in recent years, and especially, as we can see here, in crop 2013-2014. But at the same time, demand has equally increased as well. And with the latest developments of Chinese increasing use of imported barley, combined with a cutback on local production and the traditional stable import demand of countries such as Saudi Arabia and Japan, I reckon the world to be under a certain pressure to produce strong barley crops to keep up with the demand. Figures in this table show particularly that the last two years have proven Europe to be a reliable producing region. Of the nearly 60 million tons production, the split between winter and spring barley in Europe is about 50-50. The European malt industry requires annually 10 to 10.5 million tons of malting barley, with a split of one quarter to three quarters between winter and spring malting barley. Russia and the Ukraine, who are both important barley producing regions and feed barley exporters, had both big crops. I expect for the current season that the crops, both in Russia and the Ukraine, will be slightly smaller. The reasons for the drop is, in my view, a combination of a dry autumn, early winter kill back in November, and the assumption that farmers will not have the capacity and sufficient initiatives to replant or to optimize their crops with necessary fertilization and crop protection. With regards to Canada, total barley production arrived at just 7 million tons. And the malting barley selection was even worse. Even if I'm of the view that barley has lost its attractiveness to the grower, since the government abolished the single marketing desk, I still expect next, year, next year's crop to be again more in line with the low end of the long-term average. But I also see a little chance for acreage to improve as the premium is currently attractive to the grower. Moving on to Australia, a country with a rather low crop reliability due to its climate circumstances. Despite this natural handicap, Australian growers have produced decent crops in recent times. Concerning the 2014-2015 harvest, I'm joining the cl club of sources estimating a total crop of 7.6 million tons. Concerning the coming crop cycle, my very first estimate is for an increase, particularly in light of the rising barley import demand in China, combined with the recent ratified free trade agree agreement between these two countries. Argentina, a country which was considered the rising star on the barley world. But what happened? On the back of the success of barley, local wheat production reduced. That brought the government into the arena, encouraging producers to grow again more wheat instead of barley in order to make sure the country will have always sufficient wheat available to feed its domestic demand. Next, we come to the major barley importing countries in the world. On this page, I like to focus on China, as China increased its barley imports by 40% in just one season. 
And as I foresee an even higher import demand in the next campaign, the increase could rise to 45% in just two years. This significant jump is a combination of, firstly, an ongoing reduction of Chinese local barley production, for the reason that the Chinese government is rather promoting the production of fruits and vegetables and the cultivation of rice and wheat as their basic foods. And secondly, the recent issues on imported U.S. corn, which was replaced to a large extent by feed barley. I assume that approximately 3.7 to 3.8 million tons are required to supply the Chinese malting industry. And the balance of about 2.2 million tons is used as compound feed. The figures in the table show right on the bottom that I project the world to currently carry a total malting barley surplus of about 400,000 tons, which is more than I had foreseen early in the season. But over time, I realized that both Argentina and especially Australia continuously improved their crop results and that the shortfall in North America was less significant. And probably the industry has worked well together to find ways that not so many imports are required. But secondly, I reckon this surplus does not, does not provide the most comfortable buffer, and hence does not allow for any major problems in the coming season. Therefore, I would prefer today to be malting barley premium rather long than short. China is the world leading malting barley importing country and the second largest barley importer in the world. The immediate eye catcher is the significant increase of Chinese import requirements from 2013 to 2014 by nearly 3 million tons. As mentioned earlier, I expect the Chinese malt industry is responsible for 3.7 million tons of imports, while the balance is used by the compound feed industry. Especially in the first two quarters of 2014, Australia has been the major supplier of barley for the malting industry. For the second half of the year, and combined with an incre the increase of feed barley demand, Europe proportionally increased its presence. The demand for Canadian malting barley is at least 200,000 tons. These requirements are rather a question of availability, but price, as certain brewers rely on Canadian malt for their successfully growing premium brands. I assume this demand to be fairly stable. Regarding the bulk of import needs for the year 2015, I foresee Australian barley to cover predominantly the malting needs, while large parts of European barley is primarily imported as feed. Since the beginning of the year, imports already, again, are nearly as high as one million tons, well spread between Australia and Europe. We discussed now the current malting barley supply and demand situation, as well as we tried to get a first understanding of how the picture could look like once the last crop 2015-2016 field is harvested with the conclusion that we might have regionally not the most sufficient supply, for example, in North America, but globally sufficient barley to fill current shortfalls. Assuming that all growing regions will harvest average malting barley crops, the supply will just be able to keep up with the moderately rising malting barley demand in 2016.